I've been trying to dodge learning about machine learning for years now. I always thought of it as something for people that are not good at programming until I saw this. The way that that robot arm moves is so freaking cool and this is the type of stuff only machine learning can accomplish. So I guess the time has come to finally get into it. Man, am I late to the party. As much as I would like to jump straight into making a robot arm juggle, I need to start with some fundamentals. So for this video, I learned how to write and train a neural net from scratch. Pure Python and NumPy. And in the end, I'm gonna try and make it learn how to recognize hand-drawn digits, which is the most classical machine learning exercise there is. Doesn't get any more fundamental than that. To learn how to write this neural network, I mainly followed this video series by The Coding Train, where it does just that, writing a neural network from scratch. Damn, this series is 11 years old. I really am late to the party. I don't want you to fall asleep on me, so here's the most high-level overview of what I learned that I can give you. So I bet you've seen something similar to this before. This is a neural network. It's got these dots organized vertically. These are called the layers of the network. And every dot of one layer is connected to every dot of the next layer, which makes it a fully connected network. These layers got names. The first one is the input layer. This is the one through which we feed data into the network. The last one is the output layer, and this one gives us the result of whatever it calculated. The middle one is the hidden layer. This is where most of the magic happens, and you can actually have as many of these as you want. So what are these dots? These are the actual individual neurons. That's just a fancy name for something that in the end is just holding a number. So let's zoom in on this guy. What number does it actually hold? Basically, it's got a sum of all the neurons that feed into it. But wait, not all neurons feed into it the same amount. They need to go through this connection, which determines how much of the previous neuron actually feeds into the next one. This is called the weight of the connection. So what can a single neuron actually do? Well, it can solve linear problems. But what does that actually mean? Imagine we are on this 2D grid with a bunch of dots in it. Some are good and some are bad. If there's a single line that can separate all the good ones from the bad ones, then this is something that the neuron can actually learn. So looking at this neuron, it's got two inputs, one for the X and one for the Y coordinate for every dot, and one output to essentially tell us if it's good or bad. But how does it know? Well, it doesn't at first. Here we got two connections, one for each input, and the weights on them start out randomly. To visualize this, we can start by drawing the line that the neuron is actually thinking about based on the initial weights. And we can also draw the line that it's actually meant to achieve in the end. Now for all the dots, we tell it if it made the correct guess about being above or below the intended line. As you can see, in red are all the dots that it actually got wrong. Because it thinks they are above the intended line when they're actually below it. So we tell it which ones are wrong and it learns to move the line in the direction of the incorrect guesses. And boom, now the lines coincide and it learned how to separate the good from the bad. Okay, this is useful, but not super useful. What if we rearrange the dots and put some bad ones in between some good ones? Now we can't split the good from the bad with just one line. We need at least two lines. And that means two neurons. And this is how we start to get a network going. So now the dots are only good if they're above or below both of the lines and they're bad if they're in between of them. Similar to before, if the network makes an incorrect guess, we tell it to move the lines by adjusting the weights of the connections. I'm not gonna get into much more detail as there are plenty of other videos that can explain this much better than I can. But I will leave you with a very cool animation of the neural network solving this exact problem. So we have this grid and you can imagine that the good dots are in the top right and the bottom left corners of this grid and the bad ones are in the top left and the bottom right one. The grid starts all gray because the network doesn't know any better and starts making random guesses on every position of this grid. We tell it if it was correct and over time it will light the area with the good dots and darken the ones with the bad ones. All this chit chat bro. Are you gonna start writing this neural network or what? What, you think this animation runs by itself? I already wrote the network, how else would this thing be learning? With this code I can build a neural network, tell it how many layers I want and how many neurons I want in each layer. And for the example I just showed you, I just feed it these four points a bunch of times and tell it if these are good or bad ones and it automatically tunes the weights of the connections until it gets it right. And since it was able to learn this basic problem, I'm pretty sure that the code is correct and the neural net is actually working. So that's it? A bunch of animations and you're done? Nah bruv, we finally reached the fun part. Now I can use the same neural network code with more layers and more neurons to do the digit recognition thing. Ah right, that thing. Almost forgot about that part. 
okay, this digit recognizer thing is like the Taylor Swift of machine learning. It's like the most mainstream problem that everybody solves when getting into the field. The data is already generated for us. We got 60,000 images in total. 50,000 of those are for training. The remaining 10,000 are for testing to see if the neural network can actually recognize digits that it has never seen before. Every image is very low resolution, only 28 by 28 pixels, and they are in grayscale, which means every pixel has a value between 0 for black and 255 for white. To feed this into our network, we're gonna pass every pixel as an input individually. So 28 times 28, that's 784. Damn, that's a big jump from only two inputs we had before. And since it's meant to recognize digits between zero and nine, it's gonna have 10 outputs. The number of hidden layers and the neurons inside them is whatever I want. I'm gonna go with two layers with 100 neurons each. The data comes compressed, so I already wrote a decoder for it. And as you can see, I got all the individual images right here. So I know that the decoder is working. Or is it? Now I just gotta shove the training set of 50,000 images through the network. This is not the most efficient network, but it didn't take too long. Now we're gonna pass the 10,000 testing images through it and see how many of those it got right. Wow, we got over 90%. That's pretty decent. I guess we're done here. Wait. This is just text on the screen. I want you guys to believe me, so let's get some proof. I wrote this little something that lets me draw whatever I want on a canvas, and below I can see the output of the network in real time. We start with a two. Okay, this is it's a bit weird. Doesn't doesn't really get it. Uh, let's try a seven. Okay, it's a bit it's, it's a bit undecisive. Let's do a zero. Okay, it's it's sure that this is a three. Something is wrong. Okay, for some reason this wasn't working at all. At first I thought I might just be writing the numbers weirdly compared to all of the training data, but looking at the images, maybe not really. I got more stats out of the testing test set. Okay, so out of 980 zeros, it's got 965 of them correct. Generally, like this looks pretty decent. I mean, it's got 95% accuracy, 90% confidence on everything. Thing looks good actually. So I checked if I was converting what I was drawing correctly, like checking if it was a correct 28 by 28 image. That also looked fine. I even printed it to the terminal as ASCII art. Always some ASCII art in my videos. Looks a bit weird, but also seems good. I checked the input images again. I noticed they have a bit of blur around them, so it might be that. So I told ChatGPT to blur my images and the blurring works, but the neural network still does not. But it should work. It tells me it's got like over 90% correct with over 90% confidence. But then I thought something else was weird. Like I wasn't drawing the numbers over the same pixels as in the training data. I'm passing every pixel individually. It's not like it's got any notion of a relationship between these pixels. So I went down a rabbit hole, looked at these other types of neural networks that are actually really good at working with images. The shiny convolutional network. I spent a couple days learning about them. They're actually pretty cool. Instead of trying to make sense of every pixel individually, they actually scan the whole image with these things called kernels. You can imagine they scan the image with this box of numbers, which does some operation on the pixels. And depending on the numbers that are in these boxes, they learn certain features. For example, these kernels can be used to identify vertical and horizontal lines, which I thought should be pretty useful to interpret these numbers. So I wrote this whole other network. This time, not from scratch. Might as well just use something that the pros are using. So I went with PyTorch. This is a library that easily allows you to create neural networks with all the bells and whistles that you could wish for. I uh, want like two convolutional layers, mm, a couple fully connected layers, and some other fancy stuff. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Anyway, so I did that, trained it again on the 50,000 images, tested it again on the 10,000 images. Damn, it's got over 98% correct. Surely it will work now. So I rewrote this demo thing to use the new neural network and, okay, let's let's give this another go. Okay, let's, let's start with the two again. Okay, that kind of worked. Let's go with a one. Okay, kind of, kind of got the one. Not super confident on that, but okay. Let's go with a nine. Okay, kind of thinks this is three or a nine. Hmm. The five. Hmm. It's not a six. That's not a nine. That's that's not a nine. Can I do an eight? That's not a nine. Man, it, it, it really thinks all everything is a nine. 
Like, for fuck's sake. At this point, I didn't even believe any of the tutorials I watched before. These guys just tested it on a 10,000 images, got a decent score, and called it a day. I never actually saw them draw their own numbers, so they might all just be bullshitting me. I was still kinda skeptical of my code, so I called in a friend who's actually like an expert on this stuff to get a little bit of help. Did a nice little one wheel ride to his place, got lost on the way. To be honest, I'm, I'm kinda lost here. Now I got my phone in my hand and the camera in the other. If I fall, what should I sacrifice? Leave a comment down below. I finally found a place, I made sure he was watching good content, and then I made him debug my code. That's why you call in the expert. Turns out my decoder was actually not working. I mean, the first time I wrote it, it was actually working because, well, I generated all of these images correctly, but I wrote it a second time to make it easier to work with the rest of the code, and I made a little mistake there. Just this one wrong number. And this was shifting all the images a little bit. That means I was trading it with all of these shifted images. Funnily enough, I was testing it on all of these shifted images. Garbage in, garbage out. Man, did I seriously lose three days on this? I learned a whole other set of neural networks to make this work and it still didn't work? Okay, so after fixing this bug and training the network again, will it finally work now? Okay, okay, let's start with a good old two. That, that's pretty confident and it's a two. All right, super confident it's a three. Let's do a six. Let's do a six. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's do a four. All right. All right. Let's do a five. Okay. That's, that's pretty confident. It's a five. Let's make this an eight now. Okay. Okay. The nine. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty confident of the nine. Oh, and, and a zero. Let's do it a zero. Yeah, yeah, it can do zeros. Yes, so I did waste a couple of days finding the real problem, but that made me learn more about neural networks. So all in all, net positive. Get it? Net positive. And you know what? My original neural network was suffering from the same problem and it was actually working this whole time. So I'm pretty happy about that one too. I said it before guys, it's 2024, we're all gonna make it. Thanks for sticking around. I hope it's been fun to see me fail time and time again. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace.